Snack has played a, a huge part in my training camp. The protein, the, the ZMA, everything. The, the pre-workout has played such a major part in my training camp, keeping me healthy, keeping me recovered, keeping me feeling good, strong, and ready for my next workout. A lot of people writing off Caleb Plant say that he has no chance to beat Canelo, that he does actually worse than Billy Joe Saunders. What's Chris's take on the Canelo versus Caleb Plant fight? The thing about undefeated fighters is there's always a question, yeah. right? You don't know, because guys step up, you know? Uh, having an undisputed champ, camp situation where me, me, Caleb might become something he's never been before, go out there and, and, and overperform and really step up to the bat, but I still don't see him beating Canelo. I don't see anybody beating Canelo mm -hmm. right now. The guy, I mean, I was ringside with the, with the Saunders fight. He was a machine. He looked like a tank, and he was mobile. He was powerful. His counter punches were spot on, and he had a distinct game plan that was going to work perfectly for for, for Saunders. And he stuck to it. Something missed in the first round. He threw it again in, in, later in the round. It missed it missed both times in the first round. Threw it again in the second round, in the third round, and the fourth round until it did. That uppercut that that that, that did the damage. Mm -hmm. He threw that thing multiple times throughout the fight. Setting it up, just finding where it was going to be. He threw that punch to where he was going to be. Slip, boom, and threw it way down low. You know, he's just, I don't know, he's, he's firing, on, firing on all cylinders right now. Mm. Say, he doesn't beat Caleb Plant, but he, do you think it's a better fight than what we saw with Saunders? Does he put up a better challenge? Uh, I, I think his footwork and um, and rhythm and hand speed will pose more of an issue in the beginning than Saunders. Mm -hmm. And I'd said this in an interview too about Saunders. Saunders, the more offensive he is, the better he'll do, but he'll be at more risk, which is exactly what happened in the fight. You know, mm -hmm. when if he just moved around the ring, he would have lost every round, and just I would have made it to the end. But who cares? He would have lost every single round. Been without. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but maybe it would have been good for him. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. We don't fighters don't think like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, but if he exchanged, and he actually had some success, you know, throwing some shots, yeah, landing some things in the middle there. Um, but then that exposed him to getting hit. Um, I think Caleb has probably got a um, a better style to fight from the outside and still be able to be competitive. Um, so I think it'll go more rounds. I don't know if necessarily, necessarily sure if he'll be more effective though. Let me throw this to you, and you tell me. If like there's no, it's just crazy tough. Caleb has a good jab. Yep. He moves really, really well. Yep. Has decent power. Mm -hmm. Canelo, and you've sure. seen the fights that have given him trouble. Guys that can jab well, mm -hmm. guys that can move. This guy's a big, or I guess, Saunders was a super middleweight. He's, he's blown up middleweight. Yeah. Plant, he's a super middleweight. Mm -hmm. There's problems there. It's, 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 you know, there's problems there in that fight for Canelo, or wrong. Oh, definitely. No, no, no. There's, there's the, the style. Any, anyone who's a good boxer and has a good jab is a problem for anybody. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, again, he's undefeated. He's, he's, he, you know, he's, he's proven it up to this point. He hasn't fought the same caliber of guys yet. He hasn't been in a show of this kind of size. He hasn't been in front of a guy like Canelo. Um, you know, again, like I said, that, that makes some guys step up. And yeah, on paper, he's got a lot of the tools that can give Canelo an issue. But Canelo's a different thing now than he was when he fought those other guys who gave him trouble. His jab is way better. He's way faster. Like, he's gotten faster, which is, even though he's moving up in weight classes, um, you know, he's so much more explosive now. I was watching uh, the Lara fight. Mm. I was getting preparing for the Saunders fight, and I was watching. Yeah, you're right. He's slower. Way slower in Lara fight. Plotting. Way plotting. Yeah. And, he, and he did a lot of the same maneuvers, that he, like that, that double jab, slip right hand, that, yeah. that ripping you know, right hook, um, you know, that he landed on Saunders quite a bit and started in the first. He was doing that with Lara, too. It was just way slower. It wasn't set up as good. Mm. He's gotten a lot better. Yes, he totally has. Mm -hmm. Basing on, on that with Canelo, a lot of people feel that Benavides is ultimately the guy that can beat Canelo. Are you in agreement with that? Yeah, I like yeah. Benavides a lot. <laughs> I like the way he fights. Um, he's, 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 a, he's a big super middle. Um, and not just, not just big in size, he's tall. He's tall, he's long, he's, he's got, he's, An he cuts weight, throws a ton of punches. And he's got a great jab. People, I think people forget about his jab because he throws so many combinations, throws so many punches all the time. Got a great jab, good body puncher, bang, 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 sets up the left hook to deliver. Um, I was super impressed with his last fight, his last performance against Ronald Ellis, who I've known for yeah, a decade a and a half. Super, dude, tough oh God, yeah. super tough guy. Super tough guy. And for him to, I think, you know, really, Ron only won the first round, really, and then after that, it was all Benavides. And, mm -hmm. and it was really the strength of the jab is what set, set the tone, and then it was just a combination punching. Um, no, I think Benavides is, is, a, is a, a, a real test and is a monster. And I think his size, his, his combination punching, and his doggedness, he's a dog. Mm -hmm. He'll take the shots. 
feet out and come forward. And he'll, I think that's a real fight. Does he become the Mexican GOAT, Canelo, if he becomes undisputed? Yeah, it's a tough Dude, one. Dude, Chavez, 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 man. But, hey, on he's paper, like, though, accomplishments-wise, accomplishments-wise, <laughs> accomplishments yeah, though, yeah, yeah. he would have achieved more than, than all of them. Yeah, it's true. So, I guess... But it's just, I think I think Chavez is like, he just epitomizes Mexican boxing. Mm. You know, it's really hard to... It's it's. He's almost like transcended. Like he's, it's funny because he's still alive. Um, <laughs> he's like, he's like a Sugar Ray Robinson. Like it's, mm. he's, he's basically a legend. Like it's not, it, not, you can't even, like Sugar Ray Robinson, I don't even think of him as like a man. You know, he's, he's elevated past that. He's gone beyond being what we all are. He's not flesh mm. and blood, mm. you know? Um, I feel like Chavez is like that too, even though literally you can grab him and touch him. You know, like he's, he is, he is flesh and blood, but uh, I think we're just got to wait to the end. Yeah. We're going to have to wait to the end of the career. It's, it's so hard to place a guy before he's done. Mm. And finally, just touching like back. For example, Ray yeah. Jr. You place him right after John Ruiz. Mm -hmm. top, one of the top fighters in the history of the world. Ever, yeah. In the history of boxing. Mm -hmm. But he kept going. Kept going. That's, that's... So I told he, Canelo, if, retire. After you be, if you become undisputed, retire. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to, <laughs> no. but I'm like, dude, retire. You're on top. Yeah. They're going to call you the greatest ever. You know, like... Your stature is going to grow even mm -hmm. more if you retire with that accomplishment. What's the point of fight? keeping fighting? You've already achieved everything. What was his response? I love this too much. And so, I'm young still. Yeah. And I still want to do other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I was going to say, from a fighter's standpoint, we don't care about that. Mm -hmm. We don't think of, oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta protect my leg legacy. We don't protect our, our records. We don't protect We don't do that. We fight. Real fighters fight. Mm. So we don't think about that. We don't think about... Oh well, if I lose these next two fights, it's gonna it's gonna tarnish my legacy. It doesn't go on our mind. Our mind is, oh, we're gonna win these two fights. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do two more. I'm yeah. gonna do one more. I'm gonna win it. You never think I'm gonna lose it. You never mm -hmm. think it's gonna tarnish you. So, yeah, it's, it's just, that's just the mindset of a fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy with the eye. Uh -huh. What do you make of all the fallout from it? You mm -hmm. being that you were in a freaking Jesus a war with Ruslan Provodnikov, mm -hmm. and your eyes were all messed up. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I broke my orbital in three places in the fight. He broke his in, in four. His was way worse than mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not the same thing. So people are like, "Oh, well, you were able to do it." I'm like, "No, nah, you can't. You can't. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't. You can't compare while sitting on the couch eating potato chips. You know, um, you, you don't know what you feel. And I will tell you, I'll tell you firsthand. When you break your orbital, it's very scary. It's very strange. It's a feeling like nothing else. How so? Explain. My face went numb. Yeah. I thought I had a hole in my face. I literally, I thought Ruslan punched a hole into my face because mm -hmm. I couldn't feel anything. Lip was numb. Teeth were. I couldn't feel my teeth for a month. Double a month? I had double vision for a month. Double vision for a month. Hey, listen, eyes are hard to fix. But how many rounds did you go with that? Eleven and a half. Yeah, because it happened in the first round. Yeah, first ninety seconds. Yeah. 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 Um, so people were giving him shit. Like, oh, I think Chris Algieri, he went eleven rounds with broken orbital ball. I think people were giving him shit because of the shit he said about well, Dubois. Rightfully, because yeah, yeah. you know, you know, get, that's the, that's the whole point. Like, you don't. Uh, sideline quarterback, or what is it? What, what is that saying? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, armchair quarterback. Arm, yeah, you don't armchair quarterback fighters. Yeah. Even if you're a fighter. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and I said that, you know, people who are coming down on Billy Joe, even you fighters who are talking about it, you've never, if you've never been there, don't, don't, you know, you never broke your orbital. You don't know what it feels like. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't knock him for getting stopped in the corner. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say he quit. I hate the, I hate the Q word, but um, listen, you've got, you got health. People die in that ring mm -hmm. all the time. You know, um, there's life after boxing. This and we're, we're warriors. And if if you believe in your heart that you have it in you to keep going, you keep going. But if if for whatever reason, you know, look at um, remember Klitschko, shoulder injury, mm. Chris Bird. Mm -hmm. Everybody came down on him. Yeah. Well, same with, with the cut with Lennox, the other one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lennox was a little different because it was the end of his career and that yeah. was his last fight. Klitschko is like he comes back and then becomes one of the, a dominant heavyweight champion. Who knows? Maybe that shoulder injury was was could have been. He kept going. That could have been a career ender. Mm -hmm. And then we never get to see what he could have been and because he was tough that night. Listen. But on the flip side, though, too, look at Israel Vasquez. He doesn't have an eye now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, uh, he has a know. glass eye. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, no, no, arm chair quarter, no armchair quarterbacking for fighters. Yeah. No. You don't know what people are feeling. That's true. So it, it took how long did it take you to recover that, the orbital? Um, I mean, shoot. I had a black eye for two months. Two months I, I would I would wake up every, you know every once in a while and would just the blood would fill back in. Like yeah. it would be it would be totally normal. Went down. I mean the, the swelling went down really fast. Yeah. Um, the black eye was was there for a couple weeks, but then for two months I would wake up every once in a while, you know, and also flying would 
pressure changes. Mm -hmm. There's you know the the, the orbital's fractured. It's yeah. you know so we bleed every once in a while. Um, the double vision went away in about three four weeks. Um, the numbness was like this was numb, all, like because nerve damage. Yeah. By about a month and change. So you have plates in your eye? No, no, I didn't no? have surgery. You didn't have surgery. No. So the doctors told me that what had happened. I broke the orbital floor. And yeah. what happens is it comes up like this, mm -hmm. and one of my um, one of the muscles that helps move your eye uh, was getting caught in that. That's what that's what was causing the double the oh, double vision. Okay. So whenever I look down, what's going on? Whenever I look down, I would get that. Um, but they said, listen, we could put a mesh in there, and I said, okay, is that going to make my, my eye more durable to punch? And they said, no. Mm -hmm. And they were like, also during the surgery, there's a chance it could hurt your vision permanently. And I was like, okay, so oh. it's not going to make my eye more durable, and you could potentially hurt my my eye per vision. It could yeah. hurt my, my vision for life. They're like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, so no, no surgery. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you don't have to. So, so naturally, you healed up. Healed yeah. up. Yep. Damn, man, that's nuts. And if you see the X-ray of his eye, it's like, it, like oh, his, but his, his freaking face. So his was so he broke. <laughs> His cheek, it was basically his cheekbone, yeah. and it was shifted. It, yeah. it, he broke his cheekbone like mm -hmm. off. Um, yeah, that's 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 brutal. I mean, but you know, even with mine, I mean, if I, if I caught another good hard or hard one, you know, who knows what could have happened to the rest of the eye? You know, but Which I is, yeah. I chose in that fight not to get hit anymore. Yeah, I didn't get hit much after that. You yeah, know, I I was, well, you chose to fight on, and I guess that's the the thing. You yeah, know, the, I guess the argument there is, you know, guys like you and others, Margarito, they, they mm -hmm. chose to fight on. Like they didn't care because it was. It was what they had inside of mm -hmm. him. Like they, that night, they felt, I don't give a fuck. This is what I do. That was the perfect way to say it. That night, I said that night. That night, I'm not leaving here without that belt. So that was that was just my mindset. Yeah. All right. Chris, man, as always, love these conversations with you. Thank you, bro. Anytime. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.